Facebook, please uh, help me and uh, support me and let's work together on, uh, by looking in the Bible and trying to find the answers. I'm going to ask some questions. Chapter 6 and 7 now, we have the five offerings. Who can name the five offerings in their order right away? Who can name them? Should I call out somebody? Some of these, uh, there are many, so let's just look at some of these. One is the priest is wearing the linen cloth, the holy clothes, even when he's taking down the ashes from the altar, and then he puts on other clothes and goes out and puts the ashes away outside the camp. So even this small thing of putting ashes away is a sacred act. He had to wear the holy clothes. And then also, the fire must burn all night. It must keep on burning. It should never go out. That's repeated even in these verses. How? How does the fire never go out? some regulations for the grain offering, the dedication offering, the, uh, it's mentioned once, it's, already, it's also mentioned in chapter uh, 8, of course, and uh, then the sin offerings, uh, let's just look at uh, 7.11 to 21, there's uh, a regulation for the fellowship offering, it says uh, that additionally to the fellowship offering, it, they animal sacrifice. They bring also unleavened bread and leavened bread. So bread with yeast and bread without yeast. Everything else is without yeast. That means pure. No influence from the outside. Pure. Holy. My relationship with God. But yeast also has another function. To go out Influence. So fellowship is pure on the inside and influential on the outside. To you know that fellowship among the believers is one of the most influential uh, uh, ways of God telling the, uh, give, giving the message to the world. And also the portion of the priest is an eternal right. Here see, we see many regulations that say that the priest may eat from the offering. And actually, the priest lives from what the people offer. So the priests are not paid. In Germany, there's a revelation for the church, for the uh, established church to receive taxes collected by the state for the church. And the priests are paid for them. What's the consequence? The churches are empty. You know, you can follow the thought line. They don't preach 
the world, so the churches are empty. So, as Mr. Esteban mentioned, the, the glory of lay mission, the glory of lay mission. If the people are offering few offerings, uh, so the priest is experiencing shortcomings. But the solution is not that the priest would get paid, but the solution is to mobilize the people to offer again, willingly. So this brings us to the conclusion of the five offerings. Come to God. That's what the, the offerings are teaching us. Come to God with your life, with his blessings. Come to God and his servants and his people for fellowship. And come to God with your sin and guilt when you recognize it and receive forgiveness. Chapters 8 through 10 are about the priesthood. And this is a picture, an image, maybe it was like this, or similar like this. Who's the man in the red gown? Moses. Yeah, Moses. Right. Thank you, Peter Joseph. Great. That's all. <coughs> Moses. And the one sitting is Aaron, his brother, elder brother, three years elder than he. And uh, behind him are his sons, Aaron's sons, and also the Levites standing uh, to assist. So chapter 8 is the ordination of the priests. And uh, first of all, uh, Aaron and his sons are to prepare offerings. Why Aaron? What do we know about Aaron, apart from being Moses' elder brother? Yeah, Peter? Uh, he made the golden calf. Yeah, he made the golden calf, for example. Yeah. So why was a man like Aaron chosen as to be high priest of the people of God? He was... Uh, let's, uh, I would like to quote from Hebrews 5, 1 through 4. It's a good question because actually uh, he was not chosen because he was perfect or because he was holy because he was a man. Every high priest is selected from among men and is appointed to represent them in matters related to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray since he himself is subject to weakness. This is why he has to offer sacrifices for his own sins as well as for the sins of the people. No one takes this honor upon himself. He must be called by God, just as Aaron was. It's Hebrews 5, 1 through 4. So it says that um, he was a mediator because he was a man subject to weakness. He understands uh, the sinners. Uh, so Aaron had... Uh, so the whole assembly was uh, the whole assembly was gathered in front of the door of the tabernacle. So it was publicly announced that Aaron would now be ordained the high priest and his sons priests. He was washed with water. He was clothed in the holy garments. He was anointed with oil, and his sons were also anointed, but they were not anointed by pouring uh, the oil upon their head but just sprinkled with oil. There's only one high priest and uh, priests. So there's an order. We learned today how important it is to have an order. And then he was offering a bull as a sin offering. He was offering a ram for burnt offering. And then the ram is ordination offering, and the blood was sprinkled on his right earlobe and his right thumb and his right toe. What could this mean? Has anybody had an idea why earlobe, thumb, and toe? For ears, hearing is very important. Hearing is very important, right. And what do you do with your hands? You act. You do. Yeah. Acting. Uh, hearing. Walking. With a foot. Uh, through the blood. Differently. 
set apart differently uh, as a priest. So uh, uh, finally, uh, this process, and we see here how many offerings they had to bring. This was repeated. In seven days, uh, the priests, uh, Aaron and his sons, stayed at the tabernacle. They didn't go away, they didn't even go home into their tents. They stayed there in the tabernacle. Uh, so they, they couldn't move away. Um, and because the oil of the anointing was upon them. Uh, so we can see that they, uh, outside the, of the tabernacle, they, are, they had nothing to do. So if the, if the oil, of anoint, oil of the anointing uh, is upon them, they couldn't go out. It was a lifelong commitment. So being called as a priest is a lifelong commitment. So you can't go outside into the world because we have no task anymore in the world if we are a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. We have to stay in God's dwelling place. This ordination lasted seven days, as I said. And then came a wonderful day, the eighth day, Summary, chapter 8, serve God, be called, washed, anointed, sprinkled with blood, and this is for life. And chapter 9 is a wonderful story. Now Aaron brings all the offerings that are prepared for him and for the people. So his sin offering, his burnt offering, and then the sin offering for the people, the burnt offering for the people, the grain offering for the people, and also bull and ram as peace or fellowship offering for the people. And after they brought all these offerings, Aaron blesses the people, and he and Moses enter the tabernacle, the sanctuary, and they come out and bless the people again, and then the glory of the Lord appears. It means God is very pleased with this uh, first priestly service and with the worship of the priests and the people. So the glory of the Lord appears, it means the cloud filled uh, the tabernacle. And the burnt offerings uh, were consumed by fire on the altar, and they, all the people saw it, and they fell down and rejoiced and worshipped. So, day of wonderful uh, uh, joy uh, as the priest is doing his priestly duty for the first time. Serving according to God's command pleases God. So the obedience of the priest and the readiness of the people were pleasing God. That's chapter 9. Uh, chapter 10 is the story of the death of Nadab and Abihu. They offered a strange fire, as it's written in chapter 10, verse 1. Uh, we can read this uh, together. Okay, let's read uh, verses 1 and 2 of chapter 10. Let's go. Aaron's son, Nadab and Abihu, took a put fire in them, and added incense. And they offered an offering on fire before the Lord, contrary to his command. So fire came out from the hands of the Lord, and into the hand, and died before the Lord. Contrary to his command means uh, that God commanded them as priests how they should offer. And among these commands was also a command saying that only the high priest uh, was allowed to put fire in the center and to offer it before the Lord. And that's chapter 16. That's in the Day of Atonement. But they did it. So not just that they 
offered a strange fire that was not commanded by the Lord. But they left their position. They offered a fire that's reserved to the high priest. That was a very severe sin. And remember, this is still the day of the first offering. This is still this beautiful eighth day when they offered for their sin and for the sin of the people. And they just had been ordained as priests. And the blood was sprinkled on them. And their earlobes still had the blood on it. And now they die because of their disobedience. So in this hour, we see that Satan attacks uh, the work of God. There was a wonderful work of God, but that where there is a wonderful work of God, uh, Satan attacks because out of envy. And when we say uh, we understand this uh, concept, then we, uh, we can say that uh, knowing this concept and knowing uh, the enemy is the first step to a victory. So they die, and now Moses speaks to Aaron. Uh, we can also uh, read a very important uh, um, verses in here. This, uh, uh, let's go to uh, five, no, uh, first three, let's go to first three. Let's go. Moses then said to Aaron, this is what the Lord spoke of what he said. showed himself holy, and in the sight of all the people, I will be honored, and Aaron remained silent. So Moses uh, then commands his cousins, uh, the sons of Aaron's uncle, which are also the sons of, who are also the sons of Aaron's, uh, Moses' uncle, of course, uh, so his cousins, to uh, bury the bodies of the two, and then he tells Aaron and uh, his sons not to grieve because they were still anointed as priests. They should not be overcome by their emotions. So we tend to have a pity with people who are overcome by emotion. We tend to say, oh, he is depressed, or he, she is depressed for important reasons. But the way to overcome is not pity but it's repentance and going back to obey the Lord. So this is the process of healing here. Aaron repents and uh, he obeys and serves as a priest. And finally, God is speaking to Aaron directly. He says, don't drink while in office, alcohol. Don't, uh, you should distinguish the holy from the unholy, and the clean from the unclean, and you should teach all the commands uh, I have um, ordered you. So this teaches us that we should offer, first as priests, we should offer obedience. Obedience is more important than sacrifice, even though we think our sacrifice might be pleasing God, God is telling us what is pleasing to Him. Obedience is better than sacrifice, so we should offer obedience. We should keep our position, and we should serve God alone through our priestly duty. Distinguish the holy and the unholy, and teach all his commands. That is the priestly duty. Conclusion of uh, this first 10 chapters of the uh, Jesus saved us from our slavery of sin through his sacrifice, through his blood, and he opened a new and living way to come to him. Now as his holy people, we are saved. We know the kingdom of priests and the holy nation. How? In order to live as a kingdom of priests and the holy nations, we need to obey his commands. We 
know, we need to know how to come to God. Leviticus is teaching us how to come to God. The offerings in Leviticus teach us how to come to God, and the priests are called to serve the people to come to God. So let's read these two key verses again. It's uh, chapter 1, 9b, and 10, 10, uh, and 11. Let's go. It's a bundle of fire, and an offering made by fire, and the world must be to the Lord. You must not distinguish between the holy and the common. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for your holy commandments to really love us and you gave us these commandments to obey so we may be our life may be pleasing to you. To you. Thank you for teaching us to come to you with our life, with a blessing, for fellowship. Come to you with our sin and guilt and receive forgiveness. And thank you for calling us uh, for the holy duty of priesthood. Uh, that we may serve you as a kingdom of priests and of holy nations in obedience to your word. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.